Okay, good afternoon. Uh, this is Faster and Farther Footwear. This is the competitive dynamics exercise for our management class. I am Rob DiStefano. The other three group members that I have are Cullen Brewster, John Poole, and Greg Williams. So, without further ado, the celebrity bids. What we did through, or I'm sorry, what we did is we pulled all the data off the BSG website and we put it into an Excel document and we went through it in a painstakingly fashion with uh, on Thursday night with all the group members. What we found is Bold Souls has been very aggressive with their bids and uh, their bid with Ace Fredder is going to expire in one year. They have very strong financial metrics and they're not anywhere near their diminishing marginal returns for their celebrity bids. Our estimate through the trend analysis and the, through, and the historical data that we grabbed is they're going to continue with another bid of $3,632 and the reason why we picked 3,632 is we found that they always end their bids in, with 32. So that's how we were able to get it that close. The other bid um, for Bronco Mars, Apex, they don't have any bids. Uh, they don't have much brand appeal right now. We expect them to not necessarily be desperate for a bid, but we expect them to overcompensate with a high bid of $4,900. So. Moving on to the private label bids, uh, Celix has aggressively pursued the low cost, low price in three out of the four geographic markets, North America, Latin America, and also um, Europe and Africa. We don't see any change in their strategy. They're, they're the dominant leader within those three segments, I'm sorry, three areas. And um, DEFCON is the sole holdout. They have the Asia Pacific market. And how are we able to come up with the numbers offered and the, the bid price? So we, again, we looked at the historical data that we pulled off the BSG website and we inputted that data into our costs and we came up with an average cost of around $15 per shoe. And then we did what we thought was an acceptable profit margin off of that. And that's where we got these prices of $20.75, $28, $20.50, and again, $28 for the, the different markets. So it was a real down and dirty analysis, but it's what we came up with. So for the chapter four points, how we were able to do that is again, what I was just saying is we went through our trend analysis and we looked at all the historical data that we could and based off the limited three weeks that we've already done this, exercise and we were seeing some strategies emerge and the one that I'll talk about again is Celex. They're the low cost, low price leader in their market or in all the markets and we basically from there we, we derived of what we thought was an acceptable profit margin and then we kind of ran it into an MPV analysis throughout the remaining years and based upon the, the various strategies that we saw we tried to game plan off of that and come up with some different um, scenarios. And again, it was we had to really focus it down, really take out a lot, strip it away, and just get to the bare bones of it. But that's how we were able to come up with the celebrity bids, private label, and the profit analysis that we did. Next slide. Um, for the points that, that we want to emphasize from chapters one through three, the big one that we're going to go through is the five forces model. So we did a five forces model and I, I did it and put it up here on the screen. The shoe industry itself, the, the threat of new entrants, we assess that to be relatively low. You could say moderate, but we ultimately went with low because the low cost that you need to actually start a plant is relative in our um, analysis was relatively low. Yes, you're going to need some startup money to buy a plant. But the raw materials themselves are worldwide commodities, rubber and plastic, and it's not that uh, it's not that uh, expensive to to buy the raw materials and to to buy a plant. The brand ID, you do need that. You need to spend a lot of mo uh, money upfront for marketing, for retailer support, and also the celebrity contracts to get your brand out there. Uh, moving down to suppliers, we assess that to be low. The BSG exercise has said that there's over 250 suppliers that supply the commodities, no one supplier can dominate the other, which would leave their uh, power to be very, very low. 
Also, again, rubber and plastic, worldwide commodities. It's not like you can go to one area and find it much, much cheaper than another area. For substitutes, the threat, again, there's really not a substitute for shoes. You can buy boots, you can buy dress shoes, you can buy sandals, uh, you can even go barefoot. But if you're going to be doing any type of athletic training or if you want to be walking around, there's really no substitute for a good athletic shoe. So the threat of substitutes for anybody else coming into the market and finding some different way to, uh, it's not going to happen. The rivalry we recessed is very, very high. Uh, one story that I found when I was researching this is in the Wall Street Journal. There's a, such a rivalry over in Europe with uh, Adidas and Puma. It used to be one company and then the brothers, it was a family company, the brothers split it off, one Adidas, one Puma, and it's literally from town to town. One town is Adidas, another town is Puma, and that's what we assess the rivalry to be. It's extremely, extremely high. Somebody either buys all their clothes and all their shoes for Adidas versus Puma. And then last but not least, we assess the threat of uh, the buyers, I'm sorry, the, the power of buyers to be moderate. There are some uh, large wholesalers, there's also some um, large multi-outlet retailers that can cobble together some relative power, but the, the high demand that is forecasted and the growth that's forecasted, we really don't think that they are in a position to really change the market or to dictate terms to uh, the, the shoe manufacturers. So. That's how we uh, derive the answers from the competitive dynamics exercises.